Here we are, State Wars Hockey Podcast number 55. Coming to you straight from New York, Long Island, Rockville Center, to be specific. Excited <laughs> for today's podcast, Greg, number 55. And uh, you said it the other day, if we're going to have a 55th episode, there's only one person we could have on this podcast, none other than PJ DiMartino, Bohemian Long Island native. Yeah, it's awesome to have him on. You know, last year when, I mean, last week when I saw 55 was coming up, I'm like, Man, we got to ask PJ to come on. We haven't had him on yet. We had his little brother Joey on, so it's only fitting, you know. And luckily, he was, um, you know, fortunate enough he was able to hop on today. I know he's down in Florida right now, playing in a nice tournament. So we'll talk to him about that a little bit. And uh, yeah, I know he's ready to go. I, I know he had a game this morning, and he's already in the waiting room. So uh, either they got smoked <laughs> and he ran out of there, or uh, you know, game ended on time. So. Yeah, I think he's playing for Team Puerto Rico in this Florida Cup there. Um, yeah. I wonder if Wilfredo Leon's coaching him down there. I got to find out. Yeah, at least got to get him involved. You know, if he's Wilfredo not. always finds a way to get involved with everything. So I wouldn't be surprised if PJ came off the ice and he's sitting on the end of the bench, handing him a towel. <laughs> That's very true. Um, you know, so, it's, yeah. it's funny <laughs> when I was, I was thinking today about this podcast, the one that came to my mind is, you know, his number, 55, right? When I think of that number, yeah, at least there's only a couple of guys in the sport that I think of a number and I automatically know who you're talking about. Exactly. When I hear 55, I know you're talking about PJ DiMartino. Um, other than maybe John Shabo at 44, which is funny. They're both from the same rank. The, the numbers are almost, you know, 4 4, 5 5. And then you had Johnny Macca with 6 6, who came before <laughs> them. It's kind of funny. I, I definitely there's something to it. But other than those two guys, I don't know if there's a number in roller hockey when I hear, like, you were number 14, I know that, but I can name five different 14s that I know that were pretty good players. You know, I think of number nine, I think of CJ, but I also think of Travis Snow, like, you know, you know. guys like Nathan Sigmund, who's changed his number, he's been nine, he's been 14, he's been whatever. Yeah. But, again, I think of 55, it's like you think of, we're talking about Wayne Gretzky early, 99, you think of Gretz, you think of 66, you know, you're talking about Lemieux, I hear 55 automatically PJ DiMartino comes to my brain. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. Um, it's funny, uh, you know, a longtime friend of ours and um, old pie hop player of ours, a guy you've coached, I've coached Anthony Landro. He was always number 55 as well. And funny enough, he actually went to the same high school as, as PJ DiMartino. Um, he was, you know, obviously older than him. So I doubt there's any, um, I don't know. I don't even know if PJ really knew that Anthony went to school to, at Connecticut. I don't know if, if he even knew that. So I'll have to ask him about that. But yeah, Anthony Landro was always number 55, you know, especially in the early uh, Tour Dragon days and stuff like that. So pretty funny. They went to a pretty small school, Connecticut, and uh, yeah, both 55. It's funny because, you know, I'll have to ask PJ this question, but the only two, there's two major NHL players I could think of that were 55. And they're both defensemen. You know, Larry Murphy, who yeah. played a long time with the Penguins and with the Red Wings, and uh, Sergey Gonchar. Remember him with the Capitals? You know, he was a big 55, another offensive defenseman. I'm going to guess Gonchar with him. Uh, you know, unless 55 was just, you know, something in that number. Maybe his dad wore that on his football team or whatever. But I I'm going to go with Gonchar, and I'm going to guess that that's kind of maybe where that number came from. But I could be totally off base with that. But obviously, that's a question for PJ. Yeah, I kind of doubt it, honestly. I think there's something else to it. Maybe it was the last number one year that he took and just stayed with him. But we'll, we'll find out when he when he pops on. Yeah, 100%. You know, and, uh, you know, so let's just talk a little bit about, we mentioned Wayne Gretzky a second ago. We were talking about the NHL kicked off the last two days. Um, you know, I, I, I'm going to assume that the Rangers don't start till tonight. But, uh, <laughs> you know, we had some pretty cool stuff seeing the NHL start on ESPN. We were talking about, Mark Messier and Chris Chelios on the broadcast that night. And then last night we had uh, the great one and uh, Rick Tockett. And uh, we had uh, the biz from uh, Spitting Chicklets, of course, was on there. So what would you think of how the broadcasts have gone so far? What's your feedback so far? Obviously, they're going to get some tweaks out, but uh, just like we do. But what do you think so far? Yeah, so comparing, you know, uh, the two networks, TNT and ESPN, um, you know, I, first of all, I think it's awesome. They're, they're both um, stream, uh, you know, televising the games. I think it's awesome for hockey. Um, I think it's going to get more viewers, uh, more people excited about the sport and, and the game. 
But uh, ESPN, I, I didn't really like that one camera angle that they had going on for a little while. Oh, the one from the moon? Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't like that. I, I see they're just trying to be a little different and, um, yeah, you know, and whatnot. But I, I don't really – I didn't really like that. Um, I liked the interview with TJ Oshie the other night. Oh, while like, he was playing, they had a mic up? While he was warming up. Warming I thought up, that yeah. was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was neat. Something different unique um so that was neat but yeah i mean it's cool having those guys on messier i thought he i, I think he was a little nervous i thought chelios was kind of a natural and the other guys were obviously good but last night you know i i think i think they gotta just warm up and get into it a little more um i thought they were good for sure i think there's definitely some uh some cool content and, and whatnot and everything seems to be about wayne gretzky uh, the best player of all time. So I, they always refer to him for stuff, especially stats and all that. But I, overall, I thought it was pretty neat and, uh, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty funny actually seeing Charles Barkley involved too. Um, but uh, yeah, what'd you think? Yeah, I agree with everything you said. You know, I didn't like that camera angle from the moon either. Um, I got to assume that just like, remember back in the day, Fox did that uh, track puck to see what's going on. Yeah. I'm assuming that angle is maybe for, the layman at home just watching to see more of the game or whatever and not, you know, not see what's going on. I, I just have to assume that I'm, I'm assuming they're going to get some feedback from the hockey purists about that angle. It's so it's hard to see. And um, yeah, you know, I like the Chelios and Messier back and forth because they played against each other, both tough guys or whatever, you know, Wayne and you know me, I'm a, I'm a 99 guy. Yeah. He's just not the greatest personality. Like that's just not yeah. Wayne, you know, he's yeah. not an outgoing kind of wild guy. So he's just very quiet and he just speaks in a, in a certain monotone way and he'll just talk about the game a little bit. It's great to get the insight from the greatest player of all time, obviously, but he's not really much of a personality, so to speak. He's got, he's got great stories though. Oh yeah. yeah 100%. I mean, he remembers, I feel like he remembers every little thing in his, in his career stories and uh, goals and then, you know, on and off the ring. So I think that's pretty neat and adds a little something to the, to the booth. Yeah, I mean, here's, here's a great Wayne Gretzky story for our for our viewers. You know, about, I don't know how many years ago it's been now, probably, whatever, Pat Maroon was playing at the time on Edmonton. So I don't know if that's five years ago, whatever it was. And we all went to go see Pat play the Islanders in Brooklyn. And we went to the game, and it was myself and Phil, Pat's brother, and Pete Penicky and uh, RM was with us, and Rob Shear, a bunch of guys. Greg, I don't think you went to that game with us, right? No. No. So we all went to the game and Wayne Gretzky was there at the game, I guess. And we all went to dinner after the game. Pat was supposed to meet us for dinner. Uh, Rob Shear hooked up a pretty cool little spot. And uh, funny story, you know, we was talking about RM, always talked about buddy RM at home. Uh, you know, Rob Shear was cutting up his meat for him at the table and his shrimp cocktail. But um, after dinner, I guess Pat called Phil because Pat, they, they lost the games. Pat couldn't, get, he couldn't meet us for dinner. They had, you know, whatever they had to do a meeting. So Pat had said to Phil, why don't you guys come back to the hotel? We're going to have a couple beers and Wayne's in town. Maybe we could have a drink with Wayne. And I just was like, yeah, right. You know, we've heard these stories a hundred times and Pete Penicky, who was with us, I had taken the training with him and he was like, we'll just get out of here. It's going to turn into all night rushing, going place to place. And, and, and it wasn't as clear as that. It was like, we're going to go here, 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 whatever. So I go home with, with Pete on the train and I find out later on that they went back to the hotel. Wayne was sitting at the hotel bar. And again, I'm a Wayne Gretzky's my idol. And the guys that went there, they just sat with Wayne privately and they just drank beers and bullshit and heard stories for about two hours with the guy. Yeah. And I was ready to put my fist through Pete's head. Um, when I heard that story that I could have been there for that, like what are the odds? When is that ever going to happen again? Never. So, uh, is this close to meet my idol right there? So um, you never know. Never every time I see, I see Wayne now, I think of that story. But uh, I had a, a good chance to meet him. I, we, I, I coached against his dad once at Narch in Toronto one year, many moons ago. And uh, Brampton, his ass pretty Thunder. good. I think we mercyed him. Um, Bauer, Bauer, Ontario Thunder, and you know, Brampton Rolling Thunder, whatever they were. Yeah, yeah. we mercyed him, I think. And he came up to me with a handshake and was just like, great team, coach. Great team. Great job. You know? <laughs> um, so that was pretty cool meeting him. But yeah, I mean Wayne, Wayne's a great guy. I did notice about Barry Mellows the other night. His hands were shaking a lot. 
I think he's got something going on. I hate to say it. I don't know if he's got uh, some sort of illness or, you know, he's obviously getting older, but I noticed a lot of this going on with him and it wasn't nerves. He's been on TV a million times. So yeah. hopefully yeah. nothing serious with him. I always liked Barry Melrose, you know, when, when Wayne went to the Kings, I rooted for the Kings that year. Um, the Rangers were terrible and, uh, you know, he was a coach. Yeah. No, it's some pretty good stories. I know Wayne was at Pat Maroon's uh, cup party this past, uh, yeah. this time, go this go around. So that was pretty neat too. You know, they have some St. Louis roots. His wife, Janet, I think is from the St. Louis area. So um, I, I think they do have a house there. And the Maroon family, I think uh, at least Pat, Pat and Phil probably, you know, they see him quite often. So that's pretty neat. I know Pat would go golfing with him a lot. He really seems to like Pat, which is great. Um, yeah. You know, who... Who would have like, I think with the, with the Oshie interview, I'm assuming, you know, that maybe because of COVID now, they don't want to have like, you know, that usual guy would skate yeah. over to the guy down low and they talk or whatever. So maybe this is something they came up with to be able to interview a guy and not be in a space kind of, because he's not going to have a mask on while he's on the ice warming up. So, um, but yeah, you know, our buddy Andrew Otto jumped in. He likes the ref analysis on TNT and uh, Dave Sapienza, our buddy from uh, Missouri, he thought the Oshie interview was great as well. So, um Glad to see everybody's enjoying. Just good to see hockey on reg regular TV a little bit, right? TNT, ESPN. Yeah. So hopefully we get more viewership and more people loving the game of hockey because obviously it's the best game in the world. So um, that's pretty awesome. Um, you know, while I'm thinking about now, we got PJ on today. I want to offer my condolences. I know Aaron Weiss, one of the head coaches of Black Ice, yeah. father just passed away um, yesterday, the day before. So I want to wish our condolences to Aaron and his family. Um, just heard that sad news yesterday. Yeah. And, um, you know, Greg, we didn't get to talk about it because we weren't on, but a couple of weeks ago, or maybe it's three weeks ago now, there was the big police fire game here yep. in New York. And for those who don't know about that at home, you know, every year, the New York City Fire Department and NYPD, they both have really good hockey teams and they play each other each year. And they, they might play each other during the year in leagues and see, but they have a big game every year. And it was always at the Nassau Coliseum where the Islanders used to play. And, uh, I got to go a few times. I think you and went once, Greg. Been a couple. Um, great game. Crowd gets rowdy. They tailgate. You get one side for the police chanting about things about the fire department. And the other side yelling at the police. And the game gets pretty physical. And we've had a lot of buddies in these games. And this year, for the 9-11 tribute, they actually held the game at Madison Square Garden for the first time. And it was televised. So I'm hoping a lot of people at home got to watch that game. And, you know, Kevin Weeks. Um, from NHL Network and, uh, you know, Ryan Callahan, former captain of the Rangers. They did the play-by-play -play and broadcast of the game. And, uh, you know, Linda Cohen watching that game, Greg, what's that? Linda Cohen. Linda Cohen was on it too. Okay. And, you know, watching that game, a lot of the best players in that game to me were the roller daddies. You know, I think 75% of the goals scored in that game were the roller guys. You know, the best two players in the game, in my opinion, both roller guys, both went to Mercyhurst, played Division One ice hockey. You had Danny O'Donohue on the police side. You had Matt Zay, former sniper youth player, no biggie, um, on the fire department side. And they were just battling out there. And they were just pretty incredible to watch. Yeah, it was awesome to see. And just the tributes and the pregame stuff, the intermission um, interviews, just really gets to you, man. You know, really hits, hits home. Um, you know, it, it's crazy to think about, but you know, a lot of these up and coming players now, they weren't really alive or, you know, had no idea what was going really going on back when 9-11 hit. So it was a big 9-11 tribute. Um, you know, just just remarkable what these guys do. You know, they're obviously the true heroes and the stuff they, they do day to day, um, the stuff I wouldn't want to deal with or you wouldn't want to deal with on a daily basis, um, just saving lives and just tremendous the amount of stuff they do, especially for the community and um, just, just an awesome game to see. And, um, like you said, it's great action, man. Um, a lot of guys played minor league hockey, some pro hockey. Um, and then you have, you know, even the age difference, there's some older guys on, on some of these teams as well that have been, been on this team for a long time, you know, each, each team for a long time. So, um, bunch of old roller guys, um, I'll probably miss a couple, but you know, our boy, Rob Shear scored that nice little backhand. Um, it was a game winner on a breakaway. Yeah. The old man did uh, it. Derek Kern, uh, you know, obviously Zay O'Donoghue. Um, then you have uh, Antonick, Kevin Antonick there skating for the police. Uh, Kyle Gabay, old buddy of mine from Sachem. Um, 
uh, Eddie Bohan, I think, was on the roster. Uh, just a bunch of different guys. Nick Neve, sure. former Nick sniper. Neve. Nick Neve. Yeah, Nick Neve. And then a guy we'll get to today, Chris Stemke, who played on the 95 New York team with PJ, who we don't really see anymore. But uh, he was a great player as a kid, and uh, he scored a big goal for the police in that game. Yeah, to open up the game. He scored the first goal of the game. Um, yeah, I see, I see Chris every once in a while as well. So cool to see him out there. And yeah, man, just, just an awesome game to watch. And I, I think they got a lot of views. That's for sure. I, I know across the country, there are people chiming in on uh, posts and stuff like that on, on Facebook. So yeah. yeah great pretty stuff. impressed with the level of play too. Like, it's not just like a bunch of, you know, hacks out there. These guys know how to play hockey. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I know Ryan Callahan and Weeks were pretty impressed with some of the guys that kept saying, you know, to get uh, Matt Zay a, a tryout. For the yeah. NHL season coming up, yep. he looked, he's pretty good out there. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, great hockey, and yeah, great, great tribute to those guys. They deserve a lot of credit. The fire and police. You know, my my dad, former police officer, thirty one years, New York City. His buddy Jerry is the coach of the police team. Um, so that's pretty awesome. And yeah, uh, oh, yeah Angel Otto reminds us here, Nano and uh, Elfline from uh, yep. the uh, the Queens guys. Don't forget the Empire Boys, Greg. Don't forget those guys. Yeah, and. Um, both played awesome in that game as well. And um, our old friend, Eddie Shalanda was actually assistant coach of the uh, police department as well. So uh, yeah, just a lot of guys we know. Um, really cool to see them on the, the main stage at the greatest uh, arena of, of hockey in the world. So yeah, that, that was that's absolutely, you know, coach Z Dave Zaram mentions here. It was pretty cool seeing the Kraken crack into the league the other night um, playing uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. So uh, they held up, they held their own pretty good. And, you know, with the system now, you know, back in the day when it seemed like the Sharks came into the league, they just got shit kicked all season because they had nobody. Now the way it is set up with, you know, they're all getting true NHL talent from all these different teams, you know, Vegas that their, their first season went to the Stanley cup and they're already talking about the crack and they think they could be a playoff team this first year out the gate. So it's really cool how the NHL sets that up. So these teams actually have a chance to play um, and, and be successful in the NHL. And, I like those cracking uniforms. It's pretty cool to have another market out West now in uh, Seattle for these guys. And hopefully it'll catch on there. And um, it could be a good thing for the future out on the West coast and another, another market. Yeah. I don't think they'll be as good as, uh, you know, the golden Knights were out of the gate, but uh, I think they'll give some teams, you know, the other night they came back, they were down three Oh tied it up and lost four three. So, I mean, they're definitely going to battle, but I just don't see them being a playoff contender uh, this year. So, yeah, we'll see. You know, you never know. Yeah. Um, you know, first never came know. out Tampa Bay Lightning. Everyone's looking at them. They're going to go for the three-peat, and they got beat up by the Penguins, who were missing arguably their two best forwards, you know. So, it's it. that's what's great about the NHL, such a wide-open uh, wide open uh, league. You know, speaking of the NHL, real quickly before we get PJ on, you know, Andrew Otto, our, our buddy again from the Empire, um, he had mentioned that all-or-nothing series for the Toronto Maple Leafs was on Amazon, and I watched that, and those at home looking for something to watch, check that out. It's kind of like a 24 seven ish kind of show they have with HBO and um, you know, no leaf Schreiber narrating it, which is made 24 seven for me. He was the best narrator in sports, but um, it was pretty good. and got to see a little insight and I actually really like that Maple Leaf group after watching that show it makes you literally, literally get to know the guys pretty well and see what they were going through. And I know they mentioned in the game last night that there there's no team in the league that's got more pressure on them than the Toronto Maple Leafs to win something. So uh, now check that show out all or nothing. I know you watched the first episode, Greg, but um, cool. everyone at home, check that out. Yeah. I think <laughs> they have the longest drought uh, in, in history right now. The Rangers yeah. were 54 years. I think they're either 55 or 56 years without winning a cup. So um, yeah, we'll see this year. They got a, they got a stacked house. So See if they hey, don't get me wrong. I still hope they lose, but I feel, you know, I, I like those guys a little bit more now. Definitely. Let's go Rangers. Big game against Dallas tonight. All right. But without further ado, he's been waiting patiently. You know, we, uh, we thought we wouldn't have them on until two o'clock, but like you said, maybe this game ended up, maybe they got mercy or they mercy the other team here. So uh, let's, uh, let's find our boy, PJ D. Martino here and bring him on. Hold on here. Oh, he's in the car. That's why he's uh, he's on early. <laughs> Connecting here. What are you in an Uber right. right now, PJ? Am I in? Are you in an Uber? <laughs> I got my I got my parents chauffeuring me around. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll get my down there with you. 
Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh. What are you in the room right now, PJ? Am I in? Wait, you gotta turn that off, guys. Yeah, turn the volume down on them listening there, and we'll get a, we'll get a feedback. So you're down in Florida playing ice hockey with Team Puerto Rico. We hear. I am. I actually. <laughs> oh, it was a. I I blew a little gasket in the first game. I got hit from behind by some kid on Mexico, uh, and uh, yeah, I I wasn't having it, so I kind of. Yeah, I kind of went after him, and uh, yeah, so they gave me like a ten minute or something, and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna get off the rink. I'll I'll get to this. Uh, I'll get to the Zoom. Make sure I make it on time. <laughs> Man, we would have got on sooner. We would have known that. <laughs> we should have. Is, is Will Fredo coaching that team, PJ? Um, no, but I do. Uh, I know that one kid on Palma, uh, Echevera or Etch, yeah. right? Yeah, he's playing. He's playing on Columbia. Um, I heard the Jamaica team has a bunch of kids that play like in the coast and like in I don't know. I, I heard they have a bunch of good players. So and then yeah, they're they're saying that like those the games that Jamaica are playing in are they're just exhibition games because they're supposed to kill everybody. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, all right, I didn't know it was gonna be like this kind of tournament. But that first game was terrible. Like. It was one – we were winning one nothing against Mexico, and then, yeah, it was kind of just turned into, like, a, a shit show. So, I was just like, yeah, I'll get off. <laughs> I know the Jamaicans had a good bobsled team. I didn't realize they were good at ice hockey. I don't think they're from Jamaica. I think they're Canadians, but they're, like, I guess they have heritage from Jamaica or, you know. Right. Something. Something. Yeah, one, one, yeah, one percent you can play. <laughs> That's basically how it is. Do you know any of the guys from your team? Did you ever meet them before? No, no, I didn't meet anybody. I actually, Chavo hit me up and was like, oh, you're Puerto Rican, right? Like, he's like, some guy's asking if you're Puerto Rican, like, and if you want to want to play in this tournament. And I was like, yeah, I'm down. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and it just happens to be my grandma's 80th birthday, so. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I'm down here at a good time. Happy birthday to grandma. Yeah, uh, yeah I'll tell her you said that. <laughs> I'm sure she's listening. Um, she will be. She's probably gonna want to make me some food now. We just get we're just getting back to the place. Awesome. What's, right, what's how's the weather down there? Beautiful. Me and me, my dad and his buddy. They uh we took a trip down by the pier at uh like by Boynton Beach. And uh yeah, hit hit a couple of bars, hung out, yeah, just relaxing, you know. <laughs> Playing a little hockey, doing a little fishing yeah. this too. Oh, yeah, I can't stop. I got the itch. Can't stop fishing. So, PJ, we're going to get started here about just talking about when you got started here in roller hockey. Um, so, when I, some people might not know this at home, but, you know, I, I worked at Rapid Fire Arena before State Wars. So, in 2002, 2003, I was running the rink down there, and, and PJ was a, just a little shit running around the rink back then, um, <laughs> you know, six, seven, eight years old, playing in the league. Um, playing for Eddie Biondi. I remember you playing in the league on his yep. team. Um, yep, the Blues. Yeah, the Blues. And uh, playing then with Smoke down there. And um, it's funny. Everyone knows PJ now, Greg. is You know, he's a pretty tough kid out on the rink. He's always battling whatever. I remember I thought he was pretty soft when he was like six, seven. You know, he had the skill, but he was always getting a little upset a lot. And I'm like, I don't know about this kid. And, you know. He, he yeah, really that, might have, been, that might have had something to do with the, the stitches I had in my chin. <laughs> But you could tell, Greg, right from the get-go that this kid had skill. You know, he had the hands, had the moves. He was a step a notch above most guys down at the rink back then. Um, he was one of the guys you had to have play up two, three years with the older kids. Um, but, you know, obviously very talented player. Um, PJ, you know, we know we, we had your brother on a long time ago. He talked about getting started in roll hockey. Obviously, you were a big influence on him. What got you started in roll hockey? Um, so, for me, it was me and my neighbor – we went down to one of those, you know, like those, I think it was Bayshore, Bayshore roller rink, but it was one of those like wood rinks, you know, you just skate around in a circle doing that thing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think we were three years old. And then uh, after that skate, there was a hockey game coming on and we saw it and we were like, oh, we want to play that. So our parents signed us up and uh, yeah, I never That's stopped since. Yeah. I remember awesome. Bayshore used to have some leagues there. And then uh, I don't know if you were around for the one, um, there was a rink right next to the flea market over there. I forget the name of it. Um, geez. 
I'll yeah, I don't know that. I was so, I was so young. I was like three, four, but that was the ring. Yeah, I played a Bayshore roller rink, and then I went to sports rink after that, and then and then rapid fire. You know, it's, it's funny, Greg. It's funny PJ says that because I've been saying forever that you know one of the issues with roller hockey. You know, back in the day, you know when I started, we played a lot at roller skating rinks. You know, wood rinks. And the yep. beauty of those wood rinks were just what happened to PJ. You go there for a skating session and then hockey's coming on and kids that are there at parties and whatever, they see the hockey and they're like, Whoa, mom, dad, I want to play that. And you exactly. get a new customer, you get a new customer coming in where a lot of hockey rinks, the only ones coming in the doors are the ones that are already playing hockey. You don't really get too many people coming in for parties and other yeah, things so other, true. Than, other than the hockey. So that really helped back in the day in the nineties, the rollers hockey rinks. Um, being played at these skating rinks where we had everywhere. Um, and you don't see as much of that today. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I totally agree with you there. Look, look at Colorado, right? Jeff Ingram's uh, skating rinks. That's how they kind of build their, their hockey players. You know, they have the hockey on after the public public sessions and the kids see the hockey and they, they want to go. So I think it's just such a great idea to have, uh, you know, roller hockey, these skating rinks kind of gets them involved, you know? Absolutely. Now, now, PJ, actually, before he became the famous Black Ice player and uh, Team New York player, he actually played on the Snipers for a year, Greg. Uh, there's a good shot of him. Tours Winter Cup. We had our team there. Pretty good squad. And uh, PJ, I don't know if you remember, but I still remember us being at Narch Finals. We lost a heartbreak at a team breakaway, your buddy Tyler Kraft and Nick, oh. uh, Nick Masters team in overtime. Um Still say it was a controversial goal. We, we thought we scored a goal earlier in the game. They called no goal. The referee was having a hamburger in the corner while the puck was loose in front. And Dylan Holtz on our team swears he put it in to win the game, and they called no goal, and they wound up winning later on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just remember battling with them a million times. I feel like we played them every every single tournament we were playing them in the championship. And Absolutely. I think they, they won majority of them. I think we only beat them. Maybe like once or twice, but they, uh, yeah. yeah, they won the majority of the times. You know, especially when you get to State Wars now. State Wars comes, 95 division. You were on Team New York. It's a good shot of you there in 2006, the second State Wars event in Bentonville, <laughs> Illinois. Um, those gloves look bigger than you. And, I was uh, just going to say, those were Johnny Max gloves. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Team Pennsylvania obviously was such a, a powerhouse back then. You guys are always battling them, always – unfortunately coming up short to those guys. Um, yep. But in all the years here, I was checking it out today. So 2005 bronze medal, 2007 bronze, 08 silver, 09 bronze, 2010 silver, 2013 bronze, all in the 2005 division. Um, and you made team America in 05, 07, 08, 10 and 13. Pretty impressive stuff for PJ. Um, but that PA team, PJ, was uh, pretty tough back then. Yeah, they were pretty ridiculous. And then, of course, Kraft's, Kraft's uh, coaching, he would he would just play the same four guys all, the entire game and mercy them in the first five minutes. Oh, absolutely. It was, his, father, yeah. his father would call me six months before State Wars, and we would talk for six <laughs> months. And he would be worried every year about it. And I'd always be like, Andrew, you guys are fine. You'll, you'll be fine. You got, yep. you got Tyler, you got Nick, you got Romano, you got uh, Gerger. I think you'd be okay. <laughs> he uh, missed the crash. Too funny. You know, and then and, uh, here's a good picture of you, uh, Team North America there. Um, oh, yeah. Good shot there, Steve Mundinger, former 90s. I was just going to say Mundinger, seven foot tall. Who was that? Steve Farina, Farina. Gerger. I think Monday was on his knees in that picture, PJ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you would think he is. Oh, my God. Daniel Nelson. Yeah, hey, Daniel Nelson. Daniel Nelson. I actually see his dad every once in a while. I run into him. I yeah, yeah. Brendan's actually playing with us on Sunday mornings now at uh, Skate Safe. So he oh, nice. To join the boys I'm too. sure. Is he still super fast? Yep. Yeah. He's, for a guy that hasn't like played in five, six skater. years, he's still pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> All those Nelsons, you know, play similar. You know, they're, they're uh, yeah, without a doubt, without a yeah. doubt. I always thought Daniel would be a good pro player if he kept playing and wanting to play at that level. Oh yeah, he definitely could, definitely. Good player, Greg. Pull up that yeah. picture. You got a good shot of you and uh, Joey, 2018, winning that junior division. It was your last year of juniors, uh, winning the cup together there. So that had to feel pretty good to win that with your brother. Yeah, that was definitely a memorable one for sure. That was a good one. 
Good shot of you guys there. Yeah, um, the boys are feeling it. PJ with the MVP there. Oh, biggie. Yeah, that was lucky. I give it, I give it to my team. <laughs> <laughs> now, 2015, PJ, we started the Palma Pro Invitational. That year, Black Ice wasn't in it. You actually were going to play with us, um, but something came up last second. You couldn't get there. Um, but you after that, uh, 2016, Black Ice has been pretty good in the Palma Pro Division, 33-8 um, and eight overall over those years with two uh, gold medal uh, winning years. You guys won it in uh, 2016 and again in 2020, and pretty impressive. You guys have been in the finals in 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, um, not making it uh, this last year to the final. Um, and in that time, 41 games played for PJ, 21 goals, 24 assists, 45 points. Not too shabby, Greg, uh, playing against the best competition <laughs> in the world. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, especially for a defenseman as well. Um, you know, that's a lot of points and it's over a point per game, especially at the highest level. I mean, that, that's it's pretty uh, impressive, if, if you ask me. So this, Thanks, this guys. One, Thanks. So, PJ, point. from a player perspective, what makes the Palma Pro Invitational so tough and, and the best tournament out there to win? It's just every every team so deep, you know. There's not uh, there's not any weak links on teams these days, you know. There's a, there used to be a couple of teams where it'd be like, oh, this guy's – that defenseman's really slow. That guy can't skate, this and that. I mean, you don't, you don't really see too much of that these days, you know. Uh, more of these teams are getting deeper and deeper. And, uh, yeah, you know, every, yeah. in every tournament, somebody else is showing up, playing, playing better than the rest, you know. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like a lot of teams are, um, you know, they're right there and learning how to win as well because, yep. you know, you can have the best team and – um, do great in round robin, but there's certain teams that just know how to do it and, and win. Exactly. Yep. So I think a lot, a lot more teams are knocking at the door now. Yeah, and the playoffs are a completely different story. You know, you go through round robin, kind of trying to save your energy for playoffs, and you don't want to be too tired. You also don't want to give away all your tricks in the beginning. You know. Right. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, every. I, at the Palma Pro, I think it's definitely the best tournament out of them all just because everybody wants to go to that one, you know? Yeah, it's gotten pretty deep this year. I thought anybody could have won it. Um, definitely eight teams could have won it this year. Like, we played Connix in the first round in the quarters and they almost beat us. Yeah, um, yep. They're right there. And, you know, just go through the list. Rinkster, you guys, us, Mudcats, uh, Palma, Golden Knights, um, Mars Blade. The other rink rat team, I mean, anyone, they get hot, a goalie gets hot, they can win a game. Um, exactly. You know, we announced the last couple of weeks, PJ, you know, still Matt, we had the still Matt floor and all the rinks there. And now, you know, we, we, that puck is our official puck. Now, how did you feel out there? Now you've had two years now to get used to that floor using the puck. Now, I know, you know, obviously you're playing ice hockey right now, guys that play a little more ice, get a little more used to the puck a little sooner. Um, yeah. How did you feel out there? The game looks so fast to me from my uh, coaching perspective. I def- I definitely love it. I love the still mat. Like I don't have a problem stopping on it. You know, it's grippy and the puck flies out there, you know, and <clears throat> with the weight of the puck, I never, I never really saw much of a difference. You know, it might be a little heavier, but it's not, uh, it's not really throwing anything off. I mean, the only thing it might throw off a little bit is the power plays just because when you're trying to make quick passes, I feel like it, it takes a little bounce sometimes. But other than that, I, I, I like the still mat. Yeah, we made a joke yesterday. If anyone complains the puck's heavy, they got to lift a weight or two because it's really <laughs> not heavy in the end of the world. It's yeah, as, no, it's really not that much. Not as heavy as an ice hockey puck. And when you hold them together, they're really not any – you can't really notice it in your hand. You feel it on your stick heavier. Um, but what I liked about it a lot, and, and granted, you know, I'm a lot older now, but I felt like I feel the puck on my stick a lot better. And it Absolutely. allows you to keep your head up more because the other pucks, when you go to make a quick move, they kind of roll over a lot because they're lighter. Mm-hmm. You know, they flip yeah. up where this one just settled. And when you go to take a one time and things like that, you get a more natural feel on the shot because the, that, the, uh, the other pucks kind of waffle off your stick a lot when you shoot. Yeah, without a doubt. I, I know what you mean with that, which for sure, like it, it has enough weight where it doesn't it, where it's not flopping up on you. And like you could feel it if it's coming off your blade, you could feel it. A lot of times with the rocket puck, you, you look up for a second and then you go to shoot the puck and the puck's not even on your stick anymore. Yeah, and even talking to the goalies, talking to Chinny, Keith Johnson, and Reds, they both they all had um, said to me that they feel 
when they make a save, they could put that puck where they want it more, where the other pucks, because they're lighter, they have no idea where they go off their body. Without oh, them, they can kind of steer it a little better. So they like that true feel, almost like ice hockey. Yeah, I definitely see that for sure. So, so PJ, before we get into things, um, we, we were talking about your number before, 55. How, how did you pick that number? Was it a, was that a number you had when you first started playing or, or what? Um, it, it was my second number that I got. So, like, my first one, I just randomly got an 81. And then when I started playing at Rapid Fire, like, I just hopped on the blues. I just – I actually uh, – I went to Rapid Fire because my buddy had a practice there with the blues. He was on the blues, and I went to, like, elementary school with him, and he was like, oh, you, you play roller hockey, right? You want to come practice with my team? And then – I showed up for practice and like Ed Biondi obviously fell in love with me and he's like, Oh, here's a Jersey. You're, you're playing next game. And it, was, it just happened to be 55. So I stuck with it. Okay. Oh, okay so it was just random. I was guessing yeah. Sergey Gonchar, the former <clears throat> Washington capital. Offensive no, I, I wish, I wish it was a little more sentimental, but, uh, but now nah, it's really, it was really just given to me at first. And I just, uh, I liked how it looked on the Jersey. Honestly, it looked, it looked nice. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, Greg, imagine being PJ's buddy. You're some guy in the league. You invite your neighbor down to come play. Hey, come down and join the team. And before you know it, you're, you're cut from the team. This guy's you know, running, the, <laughs> running it out there. And uh, you're like, God damn it. You know, I've been playing every day for the last two years. And this kid just started. He's already skating circles around me. Oh, it was funny. <laughs> Coach Ed isn't cutting anyone. <laughs> oh, he was he was crazy back then. Such <laughs> such good memories, though, down at Rapid Fire. Uh, Ed, Ed was a good man. I remember I would coach whatever team I was coaching down there, and he was so intense, that big, booming voice on the other side. Oh, my God. Was, he had the whole building shaking. Oh yeah. <laughs> he was like six foot eight. You know, yeah, his kids yeah. are huge, you know. Yep. Uh, Nicky, you know, wasn't the best skater, but he could take a wrist shot from center ice and put it up a corner. You know, he could just shoot. Oh, my God. Off, his, you know? his shot was scary. I did not <laughs> want to step, step near him when he was shooting. Especially at that age. Yeah, he was a giant. She had to be a 200 pounds and we were like seven. hundred <laughs> percent. You know, uh, so PJ in 2017, um, you had one of the ultimate honors in the sport, um, getting to play for team USA for the first time. I joined you on that trip my first time as well on the coaching staff. You know, we had a really memorable, awesome trip. I think all of us will agree. It was just one of the best times ever. Um, we spent about a week in Chicago for camp and practices. And then we all traveled together to Slovakia um, which is the place that I know I can speak for myself. I probably never would have went in my life if it wasn't for that tournament. And uh, yeah, we for about, about 11 days or so. Um, six games played, two goals scored, six assists, eight points, a plus five, and most importantly, a gold medal. Um, so talk about that experience for the first time, Pete. Oh, man. I, I mean, the – the whole, the most crazy part was the tryout, without a doubt. Like that, the trying out for that team is just—I uh, don't know. He got every the best players out there, and you're all playing against each other. It's it gets pretty crazy, you know. Are you guys like even the guys before with that, right? Have you been? You went once before. Yeah, right? yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think 2015 I got cut. I think okay. when we had when we yeah when we tried out at tours. That, okay, that yeah, was what was. right. Okay. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, those tryouts, man, they get uh, they're intense, and it's, the competition is just no joke. But uh, but yeah, being out in Slovakia, that was unreal. I mean, no AC and like that kind of stuff. <laughs> but uh, but the team, the team, and everything, we we killed it. I didn't even there wasn't a second where I thought we were gonna like lose to anybody, you know? Yeah. I've and said before on this range. podcast many times how long the games are, PJ. You go out, it's like a 15-minute warm-up. Then we go back yeah. to the locker room. Then you come back out. And and luckily, you know, that one tough game we had where we came back and beat the Czechs in the semi, we had that halftime. We went back to the locker room. We kind of talked about things, and we came out a new team. So that really yeah. helped, I thought. That was the coolest thing, like how, how they treated the whole thing, you know. You really treated like you're a professional out there. The whole thing, the double IHF, they uh, they really made the whole tournament really uh, really sick. It was the coolest experience. There's a big goal from PJ here yeah. in the championship against Finland, Greg. <laughs> Just spreading the water. <laughs> they like skated away from me on that. Yeah, right. They were they were nervous. I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's like all right, you can give me the middle, party. sure. <laughs> now, do you remember being a little nervous, PJ? I'm thinking back. You know, yeah, um, yeah. I ran the defense that year, and I remember the first game or two, 
saying to Joe, like, I thought you looked a little nervous. Like, you know, you yeah, were a little no, tentative no, no, no. at times and then you got, you, you started feeling comfortable, but it's a little nerve wracking the first time. Right. Yeah, for sure. You know, you're the youngest guy on the team and, you know, I never played with any of them besides Shane. So, you know, I mean, it takes a little bit to get used to him, but, uh, yeah. you know, once you get the butterflies out and you calm down and yeah, it's nothing, but I mean, yeah, even the big, the big rink and everything, like that was probably the biggest rink I've ever played on, you know, and blue yeah, lines uh, sides too. Those 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 blue lines. Oh yeah, and then they all sides. sides. Yeah, yeah. there's there's a bunch of things. Yeah, I guess there was a bunch of factors that was throwing me off a little. But yeah, it was so cool. Yeah, Whole I mean, thing. those big rinks are great for guys like you. You know, you, yeah, you, guys, you know, young guys who could skate and uh, open up the rink and just yeah, you just and you just have all the time in the world. It was almost like it almost felt like the rink was so big that I had so much time where I was like getting nervous. Cause I was like, Oh my God, I just like could do whatever I want. And then all of a sudden somebody's all over you and it's like, Oh shit. Now I'm, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it, was, it was definitely different. Like even their style of hockey, you know, like those got like the Czech and Finland, they all play different, you know? It's pretty amazing, Greg, you know, you know, back when you were playing Greg, you know, guys that come out on quads and, you know, they got uh, bamboo <laughs> sticks or whatever, you know, what? nowadays these teams, they could skate, PJ, like guys can play, you know, the Finns, the Swedes, the Czechs, now the French and the Spaniards could skate and the Italians can bring it. And obviously Canada's always been good. And, Plus, you know, it's, yeah. there's so much talent out there in all these countries. People think it's like a no brainer. USA is going to win, but these guys, no, really beat them. yeah, yeah, no, it's not, it's not as easy as we think it is. But then sometimes but when we come out and we play our game, then it is pretty easy, I guess. Like in Barcelona, we I feel like we were just killing it. We were killing it. Besides yeah, when we lost to Jack. But yeah, let's fast forward to that year. So two years later, IIHF unfortunately you know, folded with the roller side for now. And uh, World Skate has taken over. We brought a team. I, I was lucky enough to be the head coach that year. Greg Thompson joined me as on the coaching staff for the first time. And we picked a team and brought a, a really good squad. You can see pictured there to Barcelona for the world roller games. And uh, once again, PJ, six games played, two goals for, two goals scored, four assists, six points, a big 14 minutes in penalties. I, I don't know <laughs> if that was all that first game incident, Greg, or not. Yeah. Um, well, yeah against Italy. Again, gold medal. <laughs> yeah, that was – I, I forgot what PJ did. I think he slammed the gate pretty hard around the scorekeeper or something. I, I don't really remember. No, those refs. Those refs didn't like me because I was playing. I was playing there the whole season, you know. So those were the refs I had in Spain the whole season. And yeah, we clearly weren't getting along. So they kept throwing me in the box, and I was kind of yelling at them a little bit. But yeah, there was an incident where PJ got a penalty. <laughs> he was pissed. And something oh, it was my helmet. Like, I think it was my helmet that fell off. Was yeah, that it wasn't like traditional penalty boxes. You're just standing back there, and he did something with the gate with the lady, and she was mad and said something to the ref. So he came over to me and basically said, hey, listen, one more thing. <laughs> I'm going to throw this guy out of the tournament. Now, here I am, head coach the first time, thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to lose one of my best players in this, this first game. Um, <laughs> but luckily, we kind of settled it after that. It never happened again. <laughs> yeah, thank God. 14 minutes. Yeah. So PJ brought break, up the checks, Greg. So PJ brought up the checks, and those at home probably know by now from a number of these podcasts talking about the checks. Checks are an incredible team. Up until this point, they were kind of the favorites to win. They had won five of the last seven years or whatever um, at World Championships. They beat us in the round robin, which I've talked about this before. I was kind of happy we lost that game. I thought it was a good wake up call for us. And yeah, um, that's it. Talk about we didn't bring out we didn't pull any tricks out we just played it kind of straight up and honestly their goalie kind of won the game for them he's an incredible goalie oh my we god went, unreal so we went to the championship game and here we are Greg we're 17 minutes left in the second half and we've dominated this championship game I I forget the numbers we did the, we timed it one day uh, PJ and we had the puck for you know 80 percent of this game 90. <laughs> And it's still zero zero. And that's when you really worry about it, you know, whether you're playing, but as a coach, a lot more thoughts go through your mind because you have a lot more time to think. And Greg and I are talking like, holy cow, we're like playing as good as you could play right now. And we haven't scored yet. Like, and all it's going to take is one for them and they can win this game. So we're like just worried that we need one. Like, who's going to be the guy to step it up and get us one? And uh, roll the tape here, Greg. Let's, let's watch this incredible goal by PJ. Tirada para Makinski. 
i aplaudir el cotac de la grada, també, aquest llançament del cotac de la pista. That guy was driving me nuts every game. A la pista i a la graderia. Oh, my God. How about when they dove all over the rink and so it was soaking wet? Yeah. Cap a la banda dreta. Here he goes. Entrada d'esquena. Torna a rebre Di Martino. Balla davant de l'escolta. Supera un gol! Quin golat! Quin golat! Quin golat! Quin gol! PJ, is it fair to say that's the biggest goal of your life right there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's definitely definitely one of them. Yeah, I I could say I could give that one number one number one spot. I mean, if you got to if you got to look at everything about it and say gold medal championship game, zero zero, and against arguably one of the best goalies in the world on top of it, um, and to score in that moment, that's pretty special stuff right there. Yeah, it felt pretty amazing. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> What a great goal, Greg, huh? That uh, was awesome. Yeah, I've, I've uh, seen... you know, you know, it was really cool too. I was, I like looked up in the stands for a second and I saw like a bunch of like the kids that I coached like that year, like because I was in Barcelona the whole year and it, yeah, it was really cool. That's awesome. <laughs> so cool. It was kind of awesome. GTS hands right there, Greg. I, I gotta admit, that looked like an old young GT right there with some of those hands. Well, a long time ago. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like Tim said, it was that was relieving for sure because I knew once we had that first one, you know, it, it was kind of over. Yeah, a little um, bit. But that second one really was uh, the, nail, the nail in the coffin and uh, definitely relieving on the bench. I, I would say that. Without a doubt. It was a good I one. I wasn't relieved until we got the second one. I wanted the second one. When, uh, when we got, when Kavaya scored that second one on that one timer, which is so unusual for him to get that kind of goal. Um, then I could breathe easily at that point. I'm like, okay, I feel good right now. <laughs> yeah, I also have a clip from uh, last year, um, actually two years ago from Fort Wayne. Hold on one sec. What? I'm having a little uh, technical issues here, but hold on. Um, so this was um, Fort Wayne 2020 against the Roadrunners. Um, PJ scoring the first Costa one here right as well. Side. Wrist shot. That one goes over top of the net. Oh, boy. Wayne Black guys. The runner's going to make by the defense. They try to get oh, it there. Wow. Knocked it in midair by Cal Cafu. Wow, Cal. That might have just saved a goal. Martino dancing to the zone. That one's knocked away. Oh, he gets it back right. in front. He scores! I remember that one when he fell and got oh. up. And it was just... Poor Keith. Poor yeah. Keith had no idea what happened. Yeah. It's it's a puck luck right there. You know, he just finds a great yeah. player. You know, it just... This happens Joe, that way. Joey's like, I got this. I, I've seen this move plenty of times. Knocks it away, bad bounce, and PJ cleans it up. And that was, that's a great way to start a championship game, I'd say. Definitely. We were, I, uh, yeah. I was so just, just like PJ, fucking manhandle him. So, PJ, <laughs> when you're playing against your brother, what kind of different energy does it bring in a game knowing that, let's face it, I have a brother too. Like, you love your brother, but you don't want to lose to your brother. Especially yeah, brother. No, so yeah, it definitely brings that... it brings the edge out of me. Yeah, I definitely have to play with an edge when I'm playing against him because I know if as soon as I take it a little easy on him, he's gonna make me look at, like an idiot. So, right. He, uh, yeah, yeah. I forgot Gotta to be uh, careful. With him. Yeah, I forgot I forgot to uh, say one thing before the the pod started. I was talking to your old coach Jim Tamburino, and he said uh -huh. he said every time you curse or say the f word, it's a hundred dollar fine. <laughs> oh, I, would, I would owe a lot. Of, I would owe a lot of money then. Yeah, <laughs> swear jar, right? Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna work on that. <laughs> so let's let's talk about your time in Europe, Beach. Um, you know, your first experience, I think, was with Grenoble um, and with Foxy out in France. No, that that was the second. That was the that second. Was the second time. So you were out yeah. in Spain, the, Spain the first time. Yeah, I was in Ruby where you were. I was okay. with. Uh, so you're with Ruby here for a season. Um, tell us about your time in, in Ruby and uh, playing oh with God. St. Pat too. Um, yeah, Ruby was amazing. I had a great time. I had such a great uh, relationship with all of them, too. Like, really great teammates there. And uh, they always like to go out after the games and, uh, I don't know, make me have – they were, they all wanted me to just have a good time, you know. So they were always down to bring me out and do cool stuff. So I really appreciated everything they did. And, uh 
yeah but like surfing and skiing and yeah you know everybody everybody had, well, wanted to do cool stuff with me so it was, it was uh definitely a great experience and uh yeah coaching the coaching side of it um i was coaching the six, a 16 and under team and they ended up winning the league like in uh, barcelona and then um and then the women's team i was coaching them with uh with my roommate he was from finland he was the goalie and uh, they they came up a little short. I can't remember if they made it to the championship or not, but yeah, they they did pretty good, I think. <laughs> also, <laughs> yeah, and then uh, yeah, so then Barcelona, that was great time, great people. And then the next year was France, and France, that was with Foxy, and I just didn't. The only thing that stunk about it was that we didn't have our own place. You know, we were living with the coach in his apartment. And me and Shane were sharing a room, so our beds are literally, like, four feet away from each other, like, not even. <laughs> so that was a little difficult to, you know, when you don't you have your own had, property. I heard you guys anything. had bunk beds when you guys were there. I wish we had bunk beds. A little, <laughs> we'd have a little more ac- room for activities. <laughs> yeah, no, was, we were all cramped in this little room. It was getting a little ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, no, and then the, and then I cracked my head, and then the, and then COVID happened, so – so I didn't really get to play the full season in France, but the beginning of it wasn't that great. I didn't really – I wasn't the biggest fan. How would you compare the leagues and the skill and the talent? Um, it's definitely – it's so hard to compare just because of how different the rinks are. Like in France, the rinks were super tiny. They were super tiny, and those teams like to play like slow and patient and like slow down the game. But – and then Spain, they want – they skate a million miles an hour and – like play really fast but the rinks are like big so like didn't really make much sense but then why i'm fine stop (laughs) but uh yeah my grandma no my mom she's trying to tell me to go in the light or something what (laughs) always coaching mom's always coaching okay (laughs) <laughs> all right we're set up now there you go i guess i'm moving around too much yeah. all right is that better there we go there you go all right thanks coach yes. <laughs> so yeah so now uh i, I see jordan mule and max alverson are heading heading back yeah to, actually yeah, our yeah. our old team um did you give them any heads up uh, about oh well, I told or... them they have to. I was told them they have to hang out with uh, Marcus Fajardo and his wife Terry. They're the, they're the best. Oh my god, yeah. mom and dad. I was calling them, but mm-hmm. yeah, they oh they were so great for, to me. They took care of me. We would, yeah, and then we would go out with the family. She they have the two kids now. So, mm-hmm. but we would just skate around Barcelona and yeah, great times, great times. And Marcus is good people. Oh my god, yeah, he's the best. And I feel like I've known him for years. Forever. I yeah. coached him for a bunch of years when he was a teenager, and uh, he was always a character. He is, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. A little yeah, city boy. Just the littlest, like, stupidest thing. Like, you'd always find something to, like, just just have fun with. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, the yep. city, like, oh, let's, uh, let's go over here and, like, uh, you know, back in the day, they used to do some really dumb stuff, so I, I won't get into that. But, you know, <laughs> but, uh, like, the whole bunny thing, Tim. Remember that one? Oh, yeah. But uh, no, they would just make so much fun out of something so stupid, you know, and uh, always a good oh time. Dude, you should have saw the one night we uh, – so it was right after we won the championship. We won the cup for the ice team, for the Barcelona ice team. And so we win the cup, and now we're, like, on our way to, like, some club. And Marcus, like, hops out of the taxi quick, and he, like, goes – he runs up to the car behind us, and he, he like, pulls his pants down and, like, moons them, like, on their, like – on their windshield and then like literally like a, two seconds le- he hops back in the car and then like a bike like a bike a uh, police guy on a bike clearly rides up to the car <laughs> just like hey i just watched you do that like and then they're just talking in spanish now he's got to like explain like oh listen i'm the coach of fc barcelona and i i was just trying to like mess around with my players oh my god it was, it was ridiculous. <laughs> any other uh, good stories you could share from out in europe um Happy i mean there's so many. I mean, between between Craft and Chain and Whitey being there, like 
and Whitey's girlfriend, like oh, that or fiance now or wife. I don't yeah, wife. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but, uh, but yeah, that was, a, that was a fun time too. I, we went out, got hammered then I went to practice and then I come back later to meet up with them and craft is just like completely incoherent. Like has, cause you can't like understand anything, but, uh, Oh my God. So it's such a good time. And then wait, uh, Osho, Wager, they came to Barcelona and then me, you know, Chandi, you know, Chandi, right. And so, and Timmy, you know him too. So yeah. me, Chandi, Osho and Wager and my roommate, Marcus, we drove, we drove from Spain to France to play in this tournament. And it's basically like, it was like a tournament, like basically everybody's just drinking the whole time, you know? So it was like one of those, but, uh, and then like Woodsy was playing on our team and, uh, and Kavaya played on our team. And we just, yeah, we just killed it in this tournament. Everybody was, everybody in France was just loving it. They were like, oh my God, these guys are like so good. Like, <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was a good time. I mean, yeah. yeah, I don't have any two good stories I could like tell, you know. <laughs> oh, is Chand, is Chand Zond? Zond? Yeah, right? yeah, he goes by like 10 different names. Okay, I, I, I know. <laughs> no, oh, like Zond, what? Yeah. You say what? You say that. X, with X like as a yeah, well, Zond, I always call it. Well, I might be I saying said, it wrong too, but I was. Yeah, Zond. no, I think it's. I think it's like it's either Shandi or Chandi. Like, yeah, Mr. X. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, he's yeah, great. So many names. <laughs> so here's a couple of questions for you, PJ. You know, we try to every time we have a guest on, we try to ask a couple of these questions just to get to know the people at home get to know you guys a little bit better with just some simple stuff. So just throw out whatever answer comes to you here. Um, Rangers or Islanders? Rangers. Call or text? Hmm, it depends who it is. Probably call though. More, I'm more of a caller. Beer or wine? Beer. <laughs> Hip hop or country? Hip hop. Ice or roller? <laughs> roller. Roller. <laughs> Scoring a goal or setting up a goal? Setting up a goal. So setting up a goal, unless it's a really nice goal. I like I like a power play snipe. It's always good. Now I know this is it may seem like an obvious question, but it, it could be a little different for some guys. Do you prefer playing the style like an IIHF how it was, where a big rink, wide open, or do you like how Barcelona was smaller rink, smaller net, a little tighter game? What do you prefer? Uh, I mean, it makes it, it makes it easier for us to win on a big rink. I think for us, it's a lot easier, but I, I do like playing on the smaller rink because it gives us, it gives the other teams like more, like, I don't know, there's more puck battles and like things like that. It's, it makes it almost more like an ice game when it's a, on a smaller rink because there's more puck battles. And I mean, the only thing that I wish they didn't, I wish they didn't call so many penalties, you know, yeah. but that, but like, yeah. That's Small what I was ring. worried about. I was worried about that going into a gold medal game, but I was glad the referees buried their whistles in that game and just let us yeah, play they were, checks. They was, were, yeah, they were good in that game. They definitely. did a good job with that. Yeah. Who, who's the best locker room guy you've ever played with? Uh, uh, I, guess, I guess KJ or, or Kraft. Now, we always say, like, you, you play against guys all the time. You know, you know guys are good, you know, whatever about them. But sometimes until you play with someone, you don't realize – how good they really are. Oh, Who's yeah, a guy yeah. for you in that situation? A guy that you always knew was good, but when we played oh. with a guy on Team USA, whatever, you're like, wow, this guy's really – who's that guy for you? I mean, Oli. Oli on Palma is really one of those players for me. Like, when I played defense with him, I was like, holy shit. I was like, I've always played against this kid, and I'm always just like the guy with the cage thinking like he's – but once I played on his team, I was like, holy shit, he is, like, amazing. Like, he is so good. He doesn't make a mistake. It's, like, actually crazy. But yeah, he's a really good player, like that I like didn't know before I played with him. And then, uh, I mean, yeah, Combsy, Com like big Combs. Like when I played against him, I would always just think like, oh, I gotta cover the big guy in front. But then when you play with them, it's like you could pass him the puck anywhere near the net, and he basically just puts it in the net. Like he just finds a way to score every time. Yeah, he's got the hands. Um, yeah, and, and he doesn't lose the puck either. He win every puck battle. Who do you think the best natural goal scorer in the game is right now? Wow, that's a tough one. Um, hmm. Trying to think who's scoring all the goals lately. I mean, 
trying to think back to this summer, who was, huh? I'll throw a few names out to you. You got a Travis Snow, obviously. Yeah, yeah, you Travis. Got a, uh, a ben Hawkins. You got a Matt White. Oh. You got a, a Tyler Spezia. You know, there's a lot of guys. Alex Kyle, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess. Fuck. Um. Oh, sorry. I guess I gotta go <laughs> with dollars right there. Ching. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> um. Yeah, I guess I'll just go with Junior. Ju- like, ju- yeah, Junior. He's. Yeah. yeah, Junior's a good goal scorer for sure. Um, what about goaltender wise? You know, obviously, you know, oh, you, you know your own goal is bad. Before you guys get into goalies, you know, the, the high score of State Wars this year was Michael Huntbringer from uh, the Mudcats. Just to give you uh, some insight on on the goal scoring this year. Who is that? He he's exactly a, plays he plays some pro hockey. Played I'm trying to think. Is he a righty? Years. Righty or lefty? I'm pretty sure he's a lefty. Yeah, he's a great goal scorer as well. He okay. might be 55 also. Is he wear 55, Craig? Um, 15, he wears, uh, I think he wore 37 this year. Oh. Last year he was 15. Yeah, he was a good goal scorer too. Yeah. Okay. What about goalies, PJ? Who's someone you see in net and you go, oh, fuck, I got to really be on my game to beat this guy? I mean, obviously, Keith Keith and Redmond. Like, yeah, I'd say those are the two that you really have to, like, I don't know. <laughs> I have to think twice before I'm going to shoot the puck because, yeah. Right. They basically know where I'm shooting. I mean, Keith, yeah, I was playing in a game at Rapid Fire and I didn't realize that Keith was the goalie. So I took like five shots and I kept getting robbed. And I'm like, who the fuck is it? And then and then sure enough, it was Keith. And I'm like, oh my God. Up oh, chink. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. It's Keith. Got I'm, like, no wonder, I'm like, right. no wonder why I'm not scoring. Because yeah, Keith, when Keith's well, in that, he uh he was, last season when I played, I think I was on Keith's team. And I think you had like five goals on Keith. <laughs> yeah, after I realized he was playing, yeah, because then I have to. Yeah, once I know it's Keith, then I'm like, all right, I have to shoot it extra hard and get the the shot quicker, like get it off quicker. Little things, little things. You can't you can't just shoot it and score, you know. Now, besides your brother, who doesn't count anymore because you know he's young, he's been playing forever. Who who are some of the guys in the game you see now, up and comers that you go, wow, these guys are going to be the next guys, they're going to be the next PJs out there. They're going to be carrying this sport. Or who's some of those young uh, guys for you? I mean, of course, Guzman. Like Guzman's really sick. And then, like, yeah, I mean, that whole Skittles group is really good. You know, you see those kids. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to think of the oh, and um, I guess like the younger Roadrunner kid or. I don't even know if they're wearing Roadrunner jerseys or if they're what they're playing with, what team they're playing with. Jared Gerger had a real good tournament this year. Oh my God, Jared! Yeah, Jared's unreal. I hope he plays with us for every tournament now. <laughs> yeah, he, he's really good, <laughs> and he definitely helps. He's just so fast, you know. He's like a whitey, you know. You just give him the puck, and he'll just wheel up the rank. And yeah, how about somebody that just came to mind, Greg? That's young. He's been playing for a while, but someone that maybe you wouldn't realize how good he played with it was Cal Kafuk that year, oh, two years yeah. ago, won MVP. Oh, I, I yeah. knew, I knew how good he was though. Yeah. I always knew he was really good. I was, and I, and he's strong as hell. Like, yeah. even when he was like, I'm like five years old when I'm like battling with. Like, remember I was playing, I was playing on your team, I think. At yeah. uh, remember at yeah. what was it, Dumars? Yeah, and me and him, are, me and him are going at it. <laughs> yeah. That was great. We were getting at it. Oh my god! Yeah, and then I scored, and then I like, chirped him, and, the, yeah. <laughs> and then he's playing on our he's playing on our team now. No, he's yeah, he's really good. Yeah, he's, he's phenomenal. Who who's a guy you love to play with? There's one guy, Kraft Fox. Kraft and Fox. I said one guy. Ah, uh, Kraft. I'm picking Kraft over Fox. <laughs> I don't know if you saw before. I I was showing some pictures. Um, you know, from this past summer, and it was a great battle between you and Foxy. You guys are lining up here at the dot. Oh, I think he got mad at me. <laughs> he got pissed. So what the fuck are you doing? Oh, <laughs> there's another one. Uh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty funny. Yeah, he got he got mad at that. I was like, dude, I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> I love when I love when I see buddies going at it on the ring. Right? <laughs> oh yeah. Out. It's great. It's awesome. So, Peach, you know, after high school, um, you ended up playing some college hockey. Sorry, I'm looking yeah. at something else. Um, yeah, so you played some college hockey. Um, you, first off, you you know, you started out at Newman, played there for a couple of years. I think you won uh, three, uh, one, one national championship there. 
Um, you made it to the finals a couple years. I think you lost to uh, Lindenwood one year, and then you ended up beating them your last year there. I won. Um, I lost the first year at Newman, and then I won two with oh, Newman. Two with Newman? Okay. I won two with Newman and then two with Farmingdale. Any, yeah. um, gotcha. And then you ended up going to Farmingdale. How was that um, experience for you playing, in, you know, at Newman and then transferring back home to, to Farmingdale? Well, I mean, being being home was cool and like that. The whole living situation was cool. That was, uh, but like me and Kraft weren't getting along. Once I went to Farmingdale and left, like Kraft and Shane, they uh, yeah, they weren't really happy with me. And Derek, Derek wasn't really happy. So, <laughs> so when we would play against each other, uh, those games would get pretty uh, intense. And so you ended up playing a little ice hockey at Farmingdale as well. Talk about that. Yep. You know, talk about Coach Maisie and, and the crew there. Yeah, Maze, that whole cult. <laughs> yeah, it was a good time. They a bunch of great guys, the coaches. Yeah. A lot of those guys coach there now. Oh, like Russ Seward was on that team. I actually work with him now at FedEx, but and uh nice. Yeah, hit. Oh my god. Just a yeah, just a great group of guys. That was uh, such a fun year with Wager, Osh, Tarasco. Yeah, that rink sucks though. We yeah. practice there with the team I coach and ice. Like that that oh, freeport? The ice is terrible. Oh my god, yeah, I can't stand. It. I think they actually just changed rinks though. I think they're gonna play at the uh what is that it? Page? Twin twin rinks? Yeah. Oh Eisenhower. Yeah, Eisenhower. Okay. I think they just got a locker room there. I think they're playing out of there now. Uh, that's the best ice. That's the world of difference there. Yeah, without a doubt. I was gonna say I don't even know how they have teams playing on Freeport still. Yeah, I practice there on Fridays with a school team I coach. I think the Zamboni driver is blind in one eye because he just misses <laughs> half the rink every time. It's just like skating on a pond. And then the fog. How about the fog? Oh, yeah. It fogs up. Yeah. Hmm. That's so funny. Um, all right. Any, any last questions from you, Greg? Yeah. PJ? yeah. So what are you doing now that, you know, you're home full time? You, your brother ended up going out to Spain, to Madrid. Yeah. Um, that would have been kind of cool going out there with him, huh? Oh, I know, I know. I would love to, but you know, the girlfriend wouldn't really like that. And then, I, plus, you know, I'm I'm at the point now in my life where I gotta make make some money, so yeah, so I'm not uh struggling. <laughs> so you're you're currently working at uh, FedEx right now, and yep. Um, where are you playing hockey? Playing hockey at Rapid Fire. And then I'm playing in the uh, Ice Men's League. That's kind of, I think. I don't know. It's like got all those rinks. The, yeah. The ones, but, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. And then, yeah, other than that, I'm, I'm here playing with that Puerto Rico team. I'm going to, I'm going to see if I, I don't know, maybe I'll play the next game. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about the whole thing. I, I was just watching everybody get hit from behind and high stick. I'm like, I don't know if I want to play in this pretty bad. The guys all speak English on the bench with you and stuff like that. Like, yeah. Video? No, no. Everybody was speaking English on my team, but I don't know. They weren't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I felt about it. They, they're all. We're go. We had like three power plays, and I'm sitting on the bench for all of them. I'm like, yo, can can we actually put a power play out? You know, this is like getting ridiculous. And then like, yeah. And then I would think I'd have a good shift, and then we'd go get a power play, and then they take me off. So I'm like, all right, I'm getting pretty angry. And then I got hit from behind. So then I just lost lost my mind a little bit. So you gotta try to get on that Jamaican team, PJ. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll play in that game. Yeah. <laughs> Where, where, uh, when's your next game and what, what, what rink are you playing at down in Florida? Um, the ice then, like the Panthers practice rink, I think. But, um, my next game is at 9 45 tonight. All right. So, you know, rest up for that one. Yeah. I'm probably going to fish a little bit, you know, catch some fish, hang out. <laughs> maybe, uh, I wanted to play golf. I want to play golf all down here. So maybe me, my dad, and his buddy will get out, play some golf. Big Pete. Big Pete enjoying retirement? Oh, my God. Loving it. Loving it. All right. I'm sure your mom's not. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my mom loves it, too. <laughs> no, your, your mom's not liking your dad being retired because she's got to deal with him all day. That's, that's what he no, now my No, now my mom hangs out with my grandma. My dad goes and hangs out with his oh. friends. <laughs> there you go. Look at your yeah. dad retired. Your mom got a second job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so funny. All right, well, PJ, well, great having you on. Um, always a pleasure. Um, we'll definitely be seeing you soon. And uh, keep up the great work in the sport. And uh, just uh, 
be safe down there in Florida, enjoy fishing, and uh, try to not get thrown out of any games the rest of the way. <laughs> yeah, thanks, boys. Thanks for having me. Uh, always a pleasure. And, uh, yeah, talk to you guys soon, all right? All right, tell your parents all. Right, you yeah, to Eunice and Big Pete, all right? Yeah, we'll do. Tell all right. Yeah, all right. Later, buddy. Bye. Later. All right, that was P.J. DiMartino, otherwise known as number 55 in the, in the sport. Um, character, huh, Greg? Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, I know how he gets. He, he goes 100 miles an hour no matter what it is. I mean, he, oh, yeah. he works his tail off, and he's very competitive. Um, I see it, you know, at rapid fire on Wednesday nights at 11 o'clock when we're just skating just for the hell of it. Um, you know, all those guys, they go – Balls out every shift, every play. They're they're working hard, and uh, PJ doesn't hold back. You know he he works hard, and uh, he probably gets a little frustrated out there, especially playing with guys he doesn't know. So can't really blame him. Yeah, when he talks about the refs, you always got to take it with a grain of salt with PJ. You know, <laughs> I think we got down to the nitty gritty of it towards the end. That he's just more mad that he's not playing on the power play and more than he wants to be. So <laughs> he's just got that. He's just fired up, and he probably had a few beers fishing before he went to the game. Yeah, so right. Yeah, probably did. You know, <laughs> but yeah, yeah you know, I was sure. saying, I, I was going to say, Greg, in the opening, I'll just save it for the close here that, you know, months ago I had talked about if I could clone one player in the game, that player is Nathan Sigmund to me. Um, and, and it's caught on. Like I've heard other broadcast guys talk about, oh, this guy's Sigmund, this guy's Sigmund. And I've said forever that, you know, to me, he's, he's the ultimate player in the game and the guy that I would, if I had to duplicate anyone and clone them and have four guys on the floor with the same game, who would that guy be? It's Nathan. But if I could pick a second guy to clone and try to win a championship with one guy's ability, that you could put four guys of that guy out there. PJ DiMartino is probably that second guy for me. Um, you know, there's so many great players in the sport, but there are very few that you could win a game with having four of them out on the floor. Guys that could play both ends of the floor that, you know, have intangibles like you just talked about, you know, being hungry for pucks and uh, that will to win and they move the puck. Well, you look at those stats I shared with PJ before, you know, so in 115 games played at state wars, 95 goals, 81 assists, you know, his games, Palma pro in 41 games, 21 goals, 24 assists. So he's basically an assist and goal guy, almost on the same ratio, which you talk about a lot of the best guys in roller hockey. I think, I don't think you get those kind of balanced numbers. You get a lot of guys score a lot of goals, but don't really play much defense or maybe don't pass the puck as much, but PJ much like Nathan does it all out there. Um, and he plays with that grit and you look at a team like black ice, you know, they were missing Billy Pascali and KJ Tiffin were two of their best players in most of the tournament this last summer. And they still made it to the semifinals um, to play us, which is pretty impressive considering. And I'll, you know, you can mention Kraft and Shabo, but PJ to me is the guy that holds it all together because I make an argument that if PJ is the guy that's not playing, I don't know if you get that far because he's just such a complete player out there for that team. And he's a heart and soul guy. And uh, he's tough to play against. And as you know, playing against him, you know, whether it's Wednesday night or Thursday night at rapid fire, or it's at Pama pro, he's going to bring it every time. And uh, he loves the game, wants to win. And uh, he's a tough guy to play against. Yeah, I can't say I disagree with you there. Um, you know, he does it all. He's great offensively, great defensively, controls the puck well. He's smart, plays with a chip on his shoulder every every shift, works his tail off, and uh, he's a team guy. You know, like you said, he's very well-rounded with his points. But uh, yeah, he's a guy I'd take any day of the week, that's for sure. Um, get, gets in there, he mucks it up, scores big goals. You know, we saw in a couple of those clips um especially early goals you know um but yeah great kid great family and uh awesome hockey family i'd say right oh yeah and, uh two of the best players in pro come from the same family i mean you see that in the nhl you know once in a while brothers or whatever doing it but yeah. uh you know they're we have some good brother combos in the game you know um but they're definitely probably the the, the biggest one as far as if you if you rated guys one through whatever you got two guys in the top 20 in roller hockey right now in that same family, uh, PJ and Joey. Yeah, it's, it's very impressive. Very impressive. Um, do you want to give a shout out to our boy, Kirk Jensen? Kirk, it's been a long time, buddy. You know, hopefully you're doing well up north. I, I know you're pickleball. Yeah, big pickleball guy. I see he's going to national championships and world champ, whatever he's doing. But 
Um, it's pretty crazy when you, I think he, he's pretty new to the sport. You know, he's probably a couple years in and he's already doing big things in it. So uh, congrats to him. Uh, we do miss you over here in the States and hopefully uh, you're still involved with the hockey up there up North. Yeah, when he first brought up pickleball to me a couple of years ago, at first I thought he invented the game. I never heard of it before. Um, <laughs> That was just some stupid game he invented, uh, but he had talked about it. And since then, I feel like everywhere I go, I hear about this pickleball. You know, Kyle Kramer, captain of the Snipers, he's a big pickleball guy. But yeah, Kirk, uh, Kirk's pretty big with that. And he was, Kirk Jensen was a great guy for our game. You know, he was our director of Alberta. He wound up being the uh, the GM of Team Canada that year in Slovakia. And um, he talked about us being the class of the tournament, but, you know, they were as well. And it was yeah. great seeing him as part of that and having some good conversations. Um, you know, Kirk's a, he's a fun guy for sure. And uh, we went, went to his house at one time, you and I, Greg, for tryouts. Remember out there to see him and had a beer with him at his house and great people and definitely miss seeing him at state wars. And who knows, maybe one day we'll see him back there. Uh, Paul Rogers mentioned that Marcus Pajaro is a great guy. Absolutely. And Brian Higney with the big question here. So who's better Joey or PJ? Uh, let's put Greg Thompson on the hot seat here with that question. Right now, I'm going to take PJ all day long. PJ's won. He's been proven. Uh, not that Joey hasn't, obviously. But, uh, yeah, P we've seen PJ in the big stage, world championships, scoring big goals, obviously. And uh, that's, yeah, that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with PJ. How about you, Tim? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's even a question right now. Um, and that's not to knock Joey in any way. It's just, not PJ, at all. Just, you know, PJ to me is a top – you know, a top five player in the game right now. Um, Two-time gold medalist that we talked about, world championships. Um, Black Ice, you know, they won Pama Pro twice. They won Narch multiple times. They won Tours a million times, Pro. You know, and uh, Joey, you know, he, he's he's younger. I mean, not that much younger. I mean, he's four years younger. Like, people, a lot of times, I think, think like Joey's like 12 years younger than BJ. I mean, they're really not that much difference in age. Yeah, um, yeah. But, you know, I mean, obviously, PJ over the years has played on a better team than Joey, um, a stronger, deeper team. And uh, Joey's, you know, I got to give Joey a lot of credit, his loyalty to VO and the Roadrunners, where I think a lot of guys in Joey's situation would have left that team a long time ago and joined Black Ice, because I'm sure uh, he's been offered a spot on that team many times. So I, I give him credit in the loyalty department um, to Joey D for that. And you brought up Joe Tambo before, uh, excuse me, Jimmy Tambo, uh, coach of uh, Farmingdale. And when I talked to him years ago about PJ and about Joey, he just said about Joey that every practice, he was so attentive, ready to go every single time, just focused and just such a hard worker and stuff. So they have that same intangible with that. Um, Joey doesn't have, I think, that edge a little bit that PJ has, you know, which could hurt PJ at times too. I think the one knock on PJ is sometimes you could rattle him a little bit and he might take a penalty or those 14 minutes there and, if you don't have the right coach to corral him or teammates to corral him, he could get thrown out of a Puerto Rico, uh, you know, <laughs> game. Um, Next year, yeah. You know, so that Joey doesn't have that in him. Joey's that guy that goes out there and gets a ship beat out of him all game long and doesn't say a word and just gets up and keeps battling. So, um, you know, but I think PJ is a little bit more of a complete player right now. And he's obviously got the experience and, and he's a winner. And um, we've talked about this before. You can't teach winning. And it's just something you have to experience. And some guys are winners and some guys aren't. And I think the jury's still out on Joey in that category. Um, but PJ is 100% a winner. Yeah, no, I mean, Joey's won his fair share of championships. Um, but, uh, you know, PJ's done it at the, the world level. So until Joey can improve himself there and score, play some big good hockey, maybe pop in a goal or a you know, big goal like PJ has, uh, I'm going with PJ. Yeah, and some might not know this, but Joey DiMartino was going to join uh, Team USA this past year at the World Championships when it was going to be in Colombia, and then it was canceled, and we didn't wind up going to Italy on the last-minute change. But, uh, you know, uh, rosters haven't been announced yet for next year. we got two big events, the World Games, which is going to be possibly a whole different team with that of all the players in the sport wanting to play on that team. And then we'll have the World Roller Games, I think now called World Skate Games, Greg, um, is going to be in November in Argentina. But uh, I'd be surprised if Joey D wasn't on uh, what, at least one of those teams next year. So Joey's, you know, he's getting there. And um, I think uh, you're going to see Joey DiMartino in a, in a Team USA jersey with his brother at some point in the near future, for sure. Yeah, no, that's for sure. And uh, so much talent in the whole family, like we said. And 
just the speed alone on Joey. He, he could play all game long and go 100 miles an hour. He doesn't get tired. You know, he's just so skillful, awesome shot, great defensively. Um, but uh, until he wins some of the bigger ones, I you know I still have PJ just a little notch above. All right, so that's it for today. State Wars Hockey Podcast number 55. I'm Tim McManus here with Greg Thompson, wishing you guys a great rest of this Thursday and a good weekend coming up. And we'll see you guys next week. State Wars Hockey Podcast, Glass Half Full Productions.